produce us ourselves. So welcome to the video tutorial for block one of the Christmas Lane block of the month. Let me show you. It is this adorable little elf. How cute is he? So for those of you that are members, you'll have your pattern with all the instructions, your placement guide. You have, of course, your fabric and all your prefuse laser cut applique pieces have come in the mail to you. If you're not a member, you can still join. Just visit stitchesofloveculting.com and then scroll a little bit on the homepage and you'll see Christmas Lane. And you can join for either sewing machine applique like we'll be um, demoing today, or you can sign up to do the embroidery machine applique version, which is where you use your embroidery machine. And we will have a tutorial every month for that version as well. So I think without further ado, we should get started, don't you think? Absolutely. Okay, so first up, I'm going to share some of my favorite notions. They're my favorite notions because mom introduced me to them and told me to love them. And so I have, because you're always right. So the notions are good. Proof. I'm always right. You heard it here first. So what I have set up by me, I like to have a cutting mat. I have a steady Betty, which is fantastic because when you're doing applique to me, I don't want to run back over to an ironing board. I like to have an ironing surface with me. Most importantly is what I call my perfect stack, which you'll see through this tutorial. I will have a camera overhead and I'll show you how we make all of our applique units and put it together onto our background fabric. But what that consists of is my Caterpillar light pad. And then on top of that, I'm just going to hold it up for you so you can see. On top of that, I think is the most game-changing thing for applique, what do you think? Absolutely. Is this beautiful applique glass mat. I'm sorry, I tapped my nails on the glass. That probably... So this allows you to put your fusing mat right over this, and then this light pad, so you can see your applique placement guide the entire time that you're building your applique units, and you can then iron directly on this without your fusing mat with your piece over to your setting so that you don't melt your light pad. So this is super game changer. We have them on our website, stitchesofloveculting.com. If you don't have it, it's worth it. So then on top of that is my fusing mat. And this is the 12 by 18 precision fusing mat. I actually just wiped this clean and it's nice and tacky again. Yep. Right? So it's got a little bit, you can kind of see there's like little grooves or little squares in it. Little so, pockets. Yeah, little pockets. So when you're ironing your piece, the heat and bond light, even though heat and bond, instead of like, you know, if you applique a lot, eventually you're going to get a little bit of sticky or dirty on your iron. With this though, it the, the sticky goes down into the pocket. Is that a good way to say it? That's instead of out to the side? But I will caution you, the more you iron your applique pieces, like she said, because mm -hmm. it's going down, you will eventually iron all the glue away. So don't keep ironing. Great segue into the ironing. We were just asked this question yesterday. Um, you want to have a medium iron. You don't need it like full blast hot. However, I will tell you my little steam fast travel iron that I use, I do turn it to full blast hot. Well, that might comparable to a, a medium iron. iron. Yeah, so if you're using like a big iron at home, like a heavy duty or like even just a standard full size iron, keep it about a medium heat and you only need to iron your pieces for about three to five seconds. It's not very long. You'll see in the tutorial today how we do it. It doesn't take very long to get it to stick. And to me, I don't do the full iron until I have it on my background fabric. Perfect. Good advice? Good advice. Good advice. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, it's also did I cover all my notions? Did you say it was a dry iron? I didn't, but we do have the steam turned off. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you used steam? It would just be unnecessary. Yeah, I don't think it would adhere as well. Because that moisture. Yeah. It's like you don't want to glue on something wet. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I do like to iron my fabric before I begin talking about the fabric that comes in the kit. And as we note in the pattern, you want to use the same amount of starch to me throughout the entire process. And I'm talking about ironing my background fabric that comes in my kit. All of your pieces that come in your kit are pre-fused and laser cut. You don't iron them at all until you're actually ironing them together. Okay, and don't starch them because that'll change the shape of it. So I'm just using regular old magic sizing stuff. There's all kinds of fun 
things that you can use. And I'm just gonna spray it. I like to spray it kind of a lot. It's up to you, but just kind of be consistent through your whole process so that your fabric stays the same. What do you say, Mom? Sure. So another thing that you'll want to have ready while I'm ironing this, we can talk about thread. So we use a 30 weight sulky thread. It's a matching bobbin that's the same color of 50 weight sulky thread in our bobbin. So basically we make a bobbin of each color that we're going to be using in our applique. And then mom, we use, what size needles? I forgot, 9014. 90, a 9014 needle goes in our machine. And mom, you want to talk about how the machine works with like not changing the tension and? Well, for, for our, our machines, I haven't had a problem with using and a regular bob and not 50 weight with the tension. It always seems to come out just right. Mm -hmm. um, Every machine is different though, so you'll want to watch your machine. But by using the same color thread in the bobbin and the top, if your tension is off a tiny bit, if it, say for instance, it was pulling a little bit of the thread from the bobbin up, you wouldn't have like a white showing with a black thread where it was really like showed little white dots. It would be matching so it wouldn't be noticeable. Exactly. And so that's why we match the threads. So I will give you a full disclosure in this demo today, in the tutorial today, so we don't have to change our bobbin anytime we change colors, I am using a white bobbin the whole time just for ease of filming. But again, do as we say, not as we do when it comes to that today, right? Right. We do use a matching thread bobbin. Yeah, exactly. So anything we were really a making. A matching color, I should Yeah. Say. We always use the matching color. So we are going to jump right in. We've got our background fabric ready. We're going to set it aside because we don't need it just yet. Now what we're going to do, you have in your pattern a page that says reverse applique pieces. So this has every single piece reversed. And what you're going to want to do is get all of your applique pieces that come in your kit in here. I'm going to jump the camera over here so you can see like magic. So each piece is reversed. What I do is take my piece, you're going to put fusible side up, and you just put it right over the outline of it, and you can use a Pigma pen, a pencil, anything that you have handy that's obviously not going to go through, not anything like a thick Sharpie. And you're just going to write the number of the piece, and that helps you keep everything nice and organized. My other tip is if you look at the pattern, we'll get to that in a second, we're going to build our applique unit. I lay my pieces out in that order. So you can see I've got a little pile of my pieces here, a little pile of a unit here, a pile of my unit in numerical order over here. But what we're first gonna do is take one piece of our little L face. So on number four, we're gonna mark piece 23. We're gonna mark his little features on his face. So we're going to get our applicant placement guide out. I'll set these aside. And so you'll notice in your kit, you have two pieces of this peach color. That is two of his faces and you have two of his hands. You also have two of the white pieces here at the bottom. And the reason is we want to double line it, right? So that any of the color of the background fabric, when you have two layers, it's going to show through less or not at all. So what I'm going to do is take one of my little elf faces. I'm going to put it right on my place with that so it's a perfect fit. I'm going to take my Pigma pen, and ever so lightly, this is the finest Pigma pen, you can use black or brown, and I'm just going to lightly mark these lines so that when I'm doing my stitching, I can use my, show, my sewing machine to stitch right over this. Or if you wanted to do hand embroidery, you certainly could. It does have, of course, we need one line on it, so you'll have to... Push a little bit harder than you would if, say, it wasn't lined. There we go. And I'm going to set this piece aside over here in my pile with my other little piece of face right there. <laughs> so cute. So now what I'm going to do is build my first unit. So we're on step five. We're going to gather pieces one through three. So if you look at your placement guide, one, two, and three. Easy peasy. We're going to put these in place. 
So when you're working with two pieces to double line it, it doesn't matter in this instance which one you put first. The piece that we just marked for the L face, we're going to put the face piece down last because we don't want to cover the lines that we drew. So what I'm going to do is put my placement guide underneath my fusing mat. And then I have my, again, glass mat and then my light pad. And what I'm going to do is just take one piece, put it right in place. And I love that this has a little bit of tacky sticky to it because my pieces don't slide around. Like say if you're using the Teflon, it can slide around. And then we just put this other piece exactly on top and we're going to very gently press for just a second. See, just a second, and not to get it to stick. Then we're going to take piece number two, which our little guy, I'm going to make sure this goes down all the way. Yeah, it goes all the way to the bottom right here. Give this a little press where it overlaps. I'm using mostly just the tip of my iron, so I don't get a full ton amount of heat. And then piece number three. And you just want to make sure you get it inside your placement lines and we'll give it a tap where it overlaps. So these you're building onto the fusing mat, right? Correct. Okay. So I have my fusing mat, then my placement guide, then I have my glass mat to protect my light pad so I can iron right here on my placement guide. Okay. And then I have my light pad. Do we have any questions? I want to make sure we answer. No, I can't. Um... I can see that people are watching, but I can't. You can't see that. Give me one second, everybody. I'm technically challenged. Just bear with me. Do, 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 do. I can't see it from here either. Oh, no. So we will make sure that if you type your questions, we'll make sure to come back and answer all of them. I'll try and be very thorough, though, in explaining everything that I'm doing. So yeah. this is unit one. Now we're going to build unit two, which is step six in your pattern. So that is pieces four through 15. I love that we number this for you because look at that number four, right? That kind of like snuck in there. It's better to build this as part of your candy cane unit because otherwise it just makes it a little more difficult because it goes under and over there. So number four is part of your candy cane. So all I'm gonna do is just move this over where I have enough space in my, my little thing. So what I'm going to start with is that piece number four. Now here, because all of these little red stripes, let me get the pattern cover so you can see. All of the little red pieces look very much alike, right? See all these shapes? They look very alike. So I didn't peel my backing off yet. I left it so that I can make sure I'm grabbing the right piece at the right time. So we start with number four, which is a piece. Guess rather it's his jacket. And we're going to simply put this piece in place first, like so. Now number five is our whole candy cane. So we're going to make sure to get this right in place everywhere around. And now we're ready to begin. Now with this, it's going to be easy to see where the um, piece goes when you're at home. I have some weird studio lighting, so I can't quite see my lines from where I'm sitting, but I bet actually y'all can. And sometimes when you're doing this, if you have a light overhead, which might be what's getting you, mm -hmm. you rely strictly on the light pad, it sometimes makes it easier to see. Exactly. The good thing about these pieces that you'll see, they go, take a look at the drawing, edge to edge. So if you have a smooth line on the left and right of your piece, or as it goes around top and bottom, then you know you're in the right spot, which is awesome. But I can see through this without my regular lighting, but again, the studio lighting gets me. So, just put this right in place. Now we're on piece number eight. And we're just going around our little candy cane. Doo -doo. So cute, isn't it? And if these aren't exactly where the placement guide has them, so cute. Right? 
I'm actually going to put a few pieces down before I iron. And I want to remind everybody, I don't know if you um, mentioned this earlier, but this quilt is based off the artwork of Amy Brooken. It is so cute, everybody. I'm just like, we'll iron that so I can lift up and see. Oof. Look at piece number nine. Glad I looked because it's further back than I thought. There we go. And you can see, just a second of heat lets it iron for you. So then piece number 10 is down here. So if you have your kit, you can do this along at the same time while we're watching together. But it's so much easier to have all of your pieces pre-fused and pre-cut because that way you don't have to trace and cut it all out yourself, like mom does when she makes the samples. <laughs> She's making something really cute right now, and I felt so bad for her. How many pieces does that have, Mom? I have no idea. <laughs> Poor Mom. I was like, you're going to trace forever. A lot. A lot of pieces. <laughs> but, you know, what's, I mean, you know, we joke that I can't have laser cut pieces, but really I changed my mind. Um, in yeah, it's design, design so, process. So it would be, I would be wasting the laser queen's time. And the digitizer's time. <laughs> and the digitizer. Exactly. All right, so we have just a few more pieces, and then this unit will be done. Just peek in to make sure I get in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Number 13 right here. So cute, isn't it? And then number 14, our final stripe. And then we have our little elf's hand as part of this. As well, this very bottom stripe lines up right at the bottom left corner of your candy cane. And now we have two elf hands. And again, it doesn't matter which one goes first, because they're exactly the same. But they're not quite a perfect oval, so you do want to make sure that you have them um, the right direction. So there we go. Give this a press. Right there, and so now we have our second applique unit completely done. So now that this is cool, I'm gonna go on and lift it and you can see how awesome it is. That it sticks together. So it's delicate, right? You have to be gentle with it. I'll set that aside. And now we're gonna get our little candy cane off. I love it, look at that. So easy to work with. Now we're gonna move on and build our little elf. Excuse me, I had a sip of my drink. So now, just move it where you have it in your placement guide. And what we're gonna do is start down here with piece number 16, and we're gonna go all the way through piece number 25. So we're gonna build our entire little elf. Again, I put my pieces in numerical order as I peel the backing off of them, so I don't have to think. I've already done the thinking, I have them in my numerical order pile. So I'm gonna get piece number 16. Then number 17 is a cute little shoe. And now 18, like so. And it's really fun to note, we position these on the laser and make sure that your stripes aren't gonna line up. We want it to be so that you get that dimension of the two pieces. All right, so now I'm just gonna iron her all four of those pieces Overlap. Now we're going to move up to piece 21. Or I'm sorry, to piece 20 over here. See, that's why you lay it in order. So you don't have to think again. So just right here. Put this piece in place. This is his right arm. A little piece of fuzz. Now we're going to put his little body down. Just like so. Make sure it's lined up. Scooch it over a little. If you need to move your piece and you, this is a really great tool. It's got a little stiletto inside too that you can use. Just sometimes you want to just hustle it a little. And this little piece, this little tool helps you do that. This is the Alex Anderson 4-in-1 tool. So you've got a seam ripper. Boo. Hope you never need to use it. Just nice little presser. <laughs> right? You hope you don't need it. And, and an then, unpicker. Huh? It's an unpicker. An unpicker. 
Hope you don't have to unpick. Well, you will on this project. <clears throat> so now, I'm just going to iron those two overlap there and here. Now we move on to his collar. Oh, and we should talk about these fabrics. They're all, um, a lot of them are the really cute Lori Holt basics and her cozy Christmas. Her B basics. Her B basics, which, gosh, they're adorable, aren't they? She has lots of basics and some new basics coming out. That are cute. We have a block of the month we're going to do with that. Mm -hmm. We can't tell you about it yet, but it's adorable. And there, there's also other new basics coming out from Riley Lake. Lake. Oh, yeah, new dogs. And yeah, so I'm excited about that. Always fun fabrics. So now we go. Remember, one of these has his little face drawn on, and one doesn't. We want to double line it. So what we're going to do is put the plain one down first, and then the one that's got the face drawn on it second. So put this little guy down. Can we hustle him up? And we're going to put this right on top. See? What a difference it makes, too, when you're double lining your piece. So we're just going to iron over this little guy. Give him a little bit of heat since he's two layers. Now we are on the fun little, make sure, 24 is the red piece of his hat. And then we have our circle right here. And then the last piece to put in place. There we go. And now we're going to give this a press where it overlaps. And I'm just covering the whole thing since it overlaps so much on the top and bottom. And that's it. We have made our elf. So now we can connect all three units into one. So I'm just going to simply lift my little elf. And you just want to be careful at your seams, right? Don't burn your fingers either. Give it a chance to cool. You can hold it with your stiletto. If yes. You want to. Yeah, you can dab. This again is another good time to use this tool. I just happen to have long fake nails. <laughs> So now we're going to put down our unit one, which was our tree unit right here. Perfect. Now we're going to take our candy cane unit and put it right in place. There we go. And now, oh my gosh, our cute little elf. So you want to make sure that don't you can, pardon? I was going to say, don't you love the tree? so cute. Such a simple little tree, but he mm -hmm. works. You want to make sure you get this in uh, the right spot because remember his little arm is part of this unit. So you want to make sure that's covered nicely. So once this little guy is in place the right way, we are going to give a little press right here where it overlaps. Right there where it overlaps. And just a little bit right there. Again, I'm not pressing all the way where it's like all the way. So now this unit is ready, and it's time to put it on our background fabric. Now our background fabric, I'm going to move this aside. Need my placement back to stay with me. So our background fabric that you get in your kit is, see, way bigger than you need. You're going to stitch with it way bigger than you need, and you're not going to trim it down until after you're done with your stitching. So see this outer trim line? You are going to work with a much larger piece, so when you put this down, you just need to make sure it's going past that trim line. Now, I'm going to grab my big elf unit that we just made. He's delicate. And I'm going to pull him over here and put him right in place on my fabric. So I'll do a little bit of a press here on top of my light pad to get it to stick in place, and then I'm going to go to my fusing mat for the real, for the real sticking down, if you will. So oh, there you go, just a little bit in the center. Again, I don't want to like do too much heat because I don't want to overexpose that fusible. So now it's good enough to stick. What I'm going to do is get my Steady Betty. If you can take this, Mom. Yes, I can. Off to the side. I think I might have put Mom to sleep. <laughs> I was thinking about something. Uh huh. There we go. So now I have my steady buddy. I can turn my light off. And I can move my placement guide. Now I'm going to give it the final press before we start sewing. 
And this is where you really get it on the fabric. So didn't y'all love the technique of building the unit? So don't you think that makes it so much easier than trying to get everything in place on your final fabric? Because if you make a mistake, well, let me show you a little trick. Well, I'm not gonna undo it, but I can tell you about the trick. If you make a mistake and you put a piece like in the wrong, wrong spot or wiggles or something like that, all you have to do is keep like a little area and then take something nice like a little stiletto and you can actually lift and move a piece, which is very cool. You just have to be gentle. Yeah, you want to be gentle. You don't want to like fray the piece or anything. Don't get mad at it. Don't get mad at your piece. So now we're going to move back over to this camera for a second. We're going to move over to the sewing machine. And what I love about this pattern for you, what we've done... Oh my gosh, you really don't. If we take out all the hard work, I like it. Don't you like it? I love it. So on the next page of your pattern, it's time to stitch. And what we've done is we've given you a little table with your stitch order. Easy peasy. So all the threads, again, are 30 weight in your needle, matching 50 weight bobbin, your 9014 needle, favorite applique stitch. I'm going to use a buttonhole stitch. Now, Hopefully you did the little welcome kit, the free starter project we send you in the mail, so you got familiar with your machine and found your favorite stitch. I, on this machine, I'm gonna use a stitch that has a bite in of two and a half, and then the distance between each stitch is one and a half. I will tell you every machine is different, when you say. For example, on my embroidery machine, what I program for everybody actually is a two and a half by two and a half is like my favorite default. And then on your other machine in the other room, what is your favorite default? Like a two by two? Yeah, pretty much. So that's what I use on this one too. Though. And you use a two by two on this? Mm -hmm. So there is no right or wrong answer on your stitch. It's what it's you a matter like. of what you like. Exactly. I will say though, the tinier the piece, like for instance, yes. the tiny pom pom on his on his hat, I would use a smaller mm -hmm. stitch than I would say to go around the bottom of his um, or like a snow. Or the tree, or the you know the bottom of his outfit, or whatever. I would mm -hmm. use. I just kind of, I kind of bury it. It's kind of fun to play with it. Well, and that's a really good tip. You can mix stitch sizes in your project. You can right. also choose not to blanket or buttonhole stitch it at all. You could do a, a fun decorative stitch mm -hmm. of your choosing. You could zigzag. You can do a straight line, mm -hmm. right it like an eighth of an inch in on every piece. I think that's harder. Do you really? I sure do. Yeah. I think that you see the stitching somehow more if you like goof. Well, sometimes that's intentional. A lot of people, there's, oh. there's where you can use like, uh, typically you'll see it with the contrasting thread. Like a scribble? Not really scribbled. I wouldn't say scribbled, but just w maybe wiggled. 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 A, a wiggled, wiggled stitch. A wiggled <laughs> a little bit. Um, and it's not just an accurate, and then when you come back and do around it again, it's not the same. Um, a lot of people do that with a free motion foot. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of foot. 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 Feet. Foot. We have an open toe foot. Let me switch over to the sewing machine. You can see right here we have a nice open toe foot. As we're stitching, that's going to really allow you to see the stitch. And the same thing at home. If you're on your machine, you have a nice big open toe, you're going to be able to see it. So, speaking of, it's kind of like having start a nice on. windshield without posters in it. You could see where a windshield with all posters. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to look at it. Do you mind handing me my stabilizer? It's in that first cubby. So when you go to stitch, the most important thing I think is stabilizer. If you don't put a stabilizer behind, you'll see your fabric kind of get like mushed into your foot. Wouldn't you say? Or sometimes it can draw into the machine. It all it just makes your piece come out a little more nice. Flat, more professional looking. More stable. More stable. So your your stabilizer only needs to go behind your applique. It doesn't have to be the full size of your piece of fabric. This is the Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. It is 12 inches wide by, I believe, 11 yards, so 33 feet. So one roll is enough for your entire block of the month. Probably two or three. It, it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like this is it's very thin. Um, I can see through it. Hopefully you can too. But it's um, still stable enough. It's stable enough that it allows you to get a really nice stable stitching, but you can also tear it away easily. easily. That's the name, tear easy. Tear easy. And it doesn't distort your stitches like a blanket stitch. If you tear, you, you still tear have to be it. careful. But um, 
it doesn't distort it. Typically, stabilizers, I think they were designed where they thought that we were going to be using a zigzag uh, satin stitch. Oh, where you can just go full is, in. Yeah, you could just like rip, let it go. Yeah. But this, with the blanket stitch, you want to be, bless you. Sorry, everybody. A little bit more careful so that you don't <laughs> mess everything up that you work so hard to make. Yeah, you don't want to do that because, again, yeah, you do work hard to make it perfect. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is show you a few simple tips on the stitching. We're not going to stitch the entire thing, but, again, you have this nice little chart that will walk you through. So what it does is it tells you the first thing you're going to stitch, what piece numbers, and what thread color. And then when you stitch all that, you'll go to the second, third, fourth, all the way down. You're going to use nine colors. So what we're going to start with is our snow which is stitched not in white, it's stitched with the accent color. So let's talk about what you need to stitch on this. The sides and bottom are gonna go into your seam allowance. So the only thing we need to stitch is across the top of our snow, that's it. If something goes into the seam allowance, you don't have to stitch it. Now when it comes to like stitching our red, technically we don't need to stitch that little bitty edge and that little bitty edge, but why not off? Keep going, it's okay to have the stitching in your seam, wouldn't you say, Mom? It's just kind of be practical about what's easiest for you. Exactly. And again, here at Stitches of Love, there are no gold leaves. That's right. I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch live on camera. Everybody wish me luck. <laughs> and Mom is watching me. So one thing when, it, when we're talking about stitches, I really am almost tempted to draw so you can see what I'm talking about. If you'll notice at this very beginning, look how this kind of starts from a curve going this way. So I don't want my piece going straight on because look, my stitch is not going to be pointing in right. I'm actually going to start with my piece angled like this, do like a little stitch, and then I'm going to pivot. You're going to pivot as you turn. So on your sewing machine, you want to start off by turning your needle down position button to needle down. If you have that option. If you have that option. If not, it, it does make pivoting a little harder. So I have that turned on. Well, you just have to be conscious and, and always hand crank it. So exactly. So the down so you can pivot. Another thing is to know how your machine is going to start. When I start this, you're going to see my machine is going to do one, two straight lines. Then it's going to bite in, bite out, two lines forward. On mom's other machine, the machine only, there's a stitch that only does one stitch in between the bites. There's another stitch that does three straight stitches before it bites. So again, know the rhythm of your machine and you'll have success. So it's, it's fun to play with the different options if you have options. If you have options, exactly. So here we go, everybody. I'm going to hit start. Let's not come unthreaded. So see, I'm stopping it right there already, and I'm going to pivot a little. Because basically, see, in the center, I want to make sure that my piece is always in the center. If I wouldn't have pivoted, I would be going off to a, the side. So pivoting is your friend. And I'm going to go really slow so that you can hopefully see. See, I'm going to bite in, forward, forward, bite in. And see, it's starting to get where I need to pivot. See how my piece looks like it's going off to the left now and not forward? means it's time to pivot. Look at that. Now I'm going forward. And this is a great time to use a knee lift if you have one for your machine. Exactly. Which you do, but you didn't. I couldn't get it in. <laughs> oh, I would have done that for you. And I didn't want to break it. Because, y'all, I'm really good at breaking mom's machine somehow. And I just... Couldn't bear that. She's like good at really breaking them. Y'all, I don't know what I do. I'm Knock on wood, I don't do that to an embroidery machine. That's right. That's my wheelhouse. That was actually really, you're better at it when you were younger. Yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten older and wiser. Yes. I'm nearly 40. I've quit breaking things. And now for your stitch, I'll say that when where she's guiding this is so that her needle is on the very outside edge, right next to the edge of that applique piece. Exactly. I'm doing everything I can not to actually pierce my applique piece because I don't want to shred it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I'm going to come really close to getting that last bite in. Look at that. Perfect. I'm going to take one stitch and now I'm going to cut. Again, that's another good thing about knowing the rhythm of your machine. Okay, so look at that. 
looks good. I feel good about that. I hope you guys can see that nice. I'm really zoomed in, so I hope it's focused enough for you. So now we've knotted off, and what we're going to do now is go right to the next section. I'm going to stitch just this section, and then I'll give you some points and tips about stitching some circles. So let's get and basically, going. Basically what she's doing, and the reason the stitch order is the way that it is, is because we're stitching things from the back forward. So what's mm -hmm. on top? Um, you start at number one. Right, but the way we decide is by what's in the background is done first because it's not so you're going top. bottom to top. However, I will tell you, we don't want to make you change your thread between every piece. So you'll see that sometimes the numbers jump because once you have a thread on your machine, stick with it. it so we follow the rule to a certain extent. It makes it go a little bit quicker. Exactly. All right, so we're just going to do a little bit more of this line, then we'll change our thread colors, and we'll show you what it's like going around a circle. The straight line is simple. I know you all got that. If you can do this little wiggle line, you've got the straight line. There's nothing to it. Hardest part, just keep your needle down when you pivot on the corner, and that's it. So now, cut my thread. Another thing, if you want to not use your thread cutter, you can do maybe the more proper thing and take your tails and take a needle and push that behind and then tie it in a knot on the back to secure your threads if you want to. We don't. Because you know the machines do a good enough job, I think, knotting it well, off. Well, they'll do a, a locking stitch. Exactly. So now we're going to go back up here to this view. We are going to change our color. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the peach on and I'm going to show you going around a circle of the hand and then a little bit of the circle and wiggle around his face. And then that'll be, uh, don't you think that's good tip? Circle, mm -hmm. pretty much all you have here are like some easy curves and then a couple little circles. The rest of it is really straightforward to stitch. And I'll, Very I'll beginner tell you friendly. one other thing. I think with this red on his <laughs> sleeve and his arm here, where there's two different pieces, I think because there's two different pieces in the print in this fabric, you can see the difference. For stitching yes. the line. But if you couldn't see it, say it was a around. solid red and you couldn't really tell where the edge was so that you weren't sure where you were doing it, it's okay to take like a, a little chalk pencil or oh yeah, a, a chalk pencil is a good one to use and just faintly draw right along the edge of that fabric applique piece and then you can see where you want to stitch. Do you want me to show that? Because I happen to have a chalk pencil. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to go back to where you all can see this. So let me come into the shop. But on, on this one, I think this is pretty There's enough to see. But if it wasn't. Yeah, if you, or, you know. If you still think you have trouble. Exactly. So I'm just going to gently trace. There we go. It's probably a little hard to see on camera, but it does make it a bit easier see to see. I can see that it's a little bit easier to see. And so exactly. that's where your needle's going to go and... It's just going to make it easier for you to have that nice line against the applique. Against the applique. So now we're changing our thread. So everybody talk amongst yourselves. Mom, entertain us. <laughs> Give us some tips while I oh, thread right. a machine. I, I'm really good at tips when I'm doing, think of the tip. I'm better at threading a machine when I don't have a camera. <laughs> yeah. There's but I'm problem. trying really hard not to bump. A few <laughs> obstacles in a way. But exactly. We certainly hope that everybody enjoys making their Christmas lane. Oh my gosh. We have, we have so, so much fun with this. cute. Of course, I always have fun with Amy's art. It is just so much fun. And we have, do we have one or, we have two, two more things coming really soon. With her? Yeah. Hours, maybe three. Um, yeah, maybe three. Well, there's one that probably will be well, next maybe year. Four. Um, <laughs> so a bunch. A bunch. Amy is, um, for those of you that don't know, she's a cross stitch designer, and so needlework market, where it's their big market, like we have quilt market, it's their big markets coming up. So she's kind like of getting weeks. really busy with that right now. So we're about to get to go see her. We might get to visit her. Yes. We've had sneak peeks of everything she has coming out. Super cute. As always. You ready? 
Absolutely. Okay. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you stitching. Again, I'm, I'm not going in the order that your pattern recommends. I'm, I'm going in my, let's talk about this order. <laughs> and so we're going to go around the circle because you're going to see what you want to happen. I'm just so tempted to draw so everybody can see. Can I do it? Draw what? It'll ruin my little piece. Pretend that there's a center dot in the middle of oh, his yeah. hand. And then you want your lines, like a spoke on a wheel, to always face that center dot. So it's going to help you guide when you pivot, if that makes sense. Mom said, no, I can't draw on this because it's well, too what cute. I would, what I would like to do with this quilt this time, since you're going to be doing videos on every single one, yeah, is that you finish each one. Uh -huh, all the, oh, all the way. All the way, and then we can donate the quilt, or you can, if it's one that you absolutely must have at home. Yeah, I do. Y'all, y'all know this. If you, if you just didn't discover us, I take all the quilts home. <laughs> oh, put my foot down. There we go. So again, my machine is gonna do two stitches forward and then bite in, and I'm gonna allow it to do one more stitch. And before I bite in, see how again my piece looks like it's going off to the left. My needle is not pointing towards the center of my piece. Boom. I lifted my foot and I pivoted just a little bit. And now my bite in, oh, right in the right just spot. Just think of the spokes on a wagon wheel. Exactly. A wagon wheel. A bicycle wheel is probably. Because oh, well, you know, none of us really do bikes in wagons well, wagons, anymore. wagons now don't have wheels like that. No. That's like Conestoga wagons. <laughs> what is a Conestoga wagon? Pilgrim days. Or like 1883? I guess, yes. I keep saying 1833. It's driving Stephen nuts. That's what I keep calling it. I haven't watched it. You, you really? No, I still haven't watched it. I think you'd like it since you like Yellowstone. What are y'all watching? Do you watch when you sew? Do you have the TV on in the back? See, on that one, y'all, I think I should have pivoted before I did that stitch. And I didn't. But you know what? No cool police. I listen to books when I sew. What book are you listening to right now? <laughs> I don't know the name of it, but it's really kind of... Oh, yes, I do. It's called Solomon vs. Lord. Oh, wow. It's a legal... Sounds thing. heavy. It's not. It's very light. It's actually funny. I'm obsessed with a book called Hail Mary. You didn't like it, did you? I haven't listened to it. Oh, it's so I heard good. Stephen listening to part of it, I think, when he was helping... The office. Yeah, when we were doing that. I'm not really into like any kind of like sci-fi-y type stuff, but man, that book just got me somehow. Okay, so I'm going to, this is driving me nuts that I haven't turned to this yet, y'all. Oh, and I hit the camera. Oh, no. Ah, earthquake. No. <laughs> not in Tallahassee. Okay. Not yet. Hopefully not. <laughs> we're on the second floor. So that wouldn't be good. All right, so we're just going to do one more little bite in, and then I'm going to pivot again. So you can see, obviously, you can sew much faster at home than I am on camera, but I want you to be able to see what I'm but, doing. But this is something you still have to go pretty slow with. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I'm going to show you the stitch I just did. I totally goofed on it. I should have pivoted before the bite in, and I'll be able to show you why pivoting matters. Did you get a B? I did. Oh, man, and my next stitch might even touch it. Terrible, I tell you. Do one more and then pivot. It's all about the pivot, but again, you'll learn your machine. What are you laughing oh, at me for? It's all about the base. It's all about the base. Oh. <laughs> Yo, that's a song in case you didn't get mom's joke. It was her favorite song for a while, wasn't it? No. You I sang just, it a lot. I just thought it was funny. All about that base. There we go. All right. Let it bite in. And now, hopefully, I can get two straight stitches without it biting in and connect off. Oh, I bit in. Oh, well. You're using the start and stop to do that. There isn't a single stitch. Was with There's this. a single stitch with button, everybody. Or a needle down button. Well, again, know your machine. Okay, so let's, let's critique what I gave a little stitch up here. Let's talk about it. Can you see that? See this stitch up here? Let me get my bifocals. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little... Hold on, everybody. I'm going to zoom out a little here. Let's go wider. 
Okay. It's not that terrible, Brittany. No one will ever see. You know, this is going in a quilt. So see on his hand, this top stitch, it's pointing this way. It should be pointing towards the center of the piece. But again, you're right. No one is going to be mad about that. Mm -mm. So then you would just continue stitching. I think, are there any more tips I missed that we should do before we... I don't think so. I think you've pretty much covered it all. We got the tips. Well, if there's any questions that we missed in stitching, don't hesitate to ask. The main thing is know your machine, go as slow as you need to, pivot. And have fun. And also with the base. And don't be <laughs> and don't be too critical of yourself because it's like I said, it's a quilt. It's gonna be on the wall. Most people are gonna see it from but a it's distance. It's a very special quilt. It is. I love this quilt. <laughs> Maybe I do want it. You've talked about donating it. I can't say I want to keep it now because mom wants to donate it. Well, you can keep it. I don't care. I can have the sample. Did you hear that? <laughs> Maybe it can go to my house just for Christmas Day. Yeah. There we go. Because you'll be there. Yeah. So you'll, again, use your guide and you'll stitch all of your colors right here. Then the next thing you'll do in your pattern, it's very important to keep going on your steps. You are going to trim it. Once you're done stitching everything, you'll remove the stabilizer because you don't want a crunchy quilt. Nope. Nope. Probably be weird when you wash it too. So after you've done all your stitching, take your stabilizer away. Then you are going to use your light pad and your placement guide. Remember your eight inch trim line that's right here. You are going to, oh, that has pink on. You are going to make sure that you trim exactly where this is. A trick for trimming that I like to do is put this over my light pad, right over my piece, and then I'll use my ruler and a, a Pigma pen or a chalk pencil, and I'll truly mark my eight inch square so that when I actually am holding my ruler and cutting, I make sure that I stay nice. I still double measure, like I measure again when I'm trimming. But that makes sure that you have your piece nice and, and ready to go. And then you're going to store it in a safe place. Do keep it in a nice flat area. I wouldn't like wad it up or fold it. I would keep it nice and flat since it's already trimmed. Because if you go and starch it and iron it again, it's going to distort it. You don't want to do that. So make sure that you keep it nice and safe and flat. Like those little flat plastic things are very nice. They are. Yeah. Or if you have nice drawers in your side. If you have a design wall, you can put it up on your design wall. Oh, and look at it all year. Mm -hmm. That's fun. So next month, we are stitching the ornaments. Oh, I think they're so cute. Oh, I love the fabrics in it, too. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully we've covered everything and given you guys a whole bunch of tips. The only thing we didn't talk about is picking your buttonhole stitch. Again, I like to have it never go backwards, which if you, um, in your starter kit, there's Julie stitch tips. And she mentions that when you're picking your stitch, make sure it doesn't do a backward stitch because man turning and it does a backward stitch, you're going to end up with like wonky stitches going off your applique piece. And you know, I mention all my tips quite a bit because really the tips are not that many tips. It's like the golden 12 tips. Really, That's all you need. It's really a simple process. Once you learn mm -hmm. it, you've got it, and it is just... It really... Yeah, we do kind of say the same thing over and over. Yeah. It's, applique is so much fun, I think. I think it's so much easier than piecing or anything like that because it's also very forgiving. You know what I mean? Like, I missed a stitch, and meh, it's okay. <laughs> Another thing, though, I do want to mention... Your last step of the um, stitch guide here in your pattern is the black to do your eyes and your um, mouth. I would go slow there, mm -hmm. especially well, when you'll you turn. You can do it by hand as well if you yep. want to, if you like to hand embroider. Would you use your 30 weight thread or would you use like a 12 weight hand embroidery thread? What would you use? I would use either a silky 12 weight or embroidery floss depending on what was handy. Okay. You know, to me. Yeah. But on your machine, you'll stick with the 30. Yes. Yeah. But there's different, again, there's different stitches you can use. Like for his mouth, I would probably use a stitch that actually does a straight stitch, but it goes back and forth a couple times over. Like a, I call it a triple stitch. Kind of like a triple stitch, but yeah. I think it's really only a double stitch. But It gives a really nice machine. dimension. Yeah. 
It, it just happens. beefs it up a little bit, you know. Yeah. Oh, and a question we get a lot too, and, and people probably ask this at the beginning, you can, uh, we get the question, how come I can't just use a 50 weight on top as well, like I do in my bobbin? The answer is you can. You when certainly you, can. When it you talk about, nice. yeah, it looks nice, but you talk about beefing it up. There is something about the dimension of the 30 weight thread that I think just gives that extra oomph. It gives it a little more depth. It gives the apple cake pieces more dimension when it's done. Yes. If that makes any sense. It's, it's, until you see it, like if you look at mm -hmm. something stitched with the 30 weight and then um, not stitched, like the same thing, like, oh yeah, I will tell you, when we first designed this quilt, I had four little um, elves. Elves in all four corners. And so looking at them differently, stitched versus non-stitched, you could really see it. Completely. You really um, can. You know you know a good way to tell? So like you're on your um, block one, you'll stitch it all. When you get your block two, before you stitch, you have your pieces ironed on. Just look at the difference. Like the one non-stitched just feels flat mm -hmm. and the one stitched feels but if it, good. But, you know, to me, stitching with a 50 weight thread on top, which I do sometimes, I really do. Yeah. Um, especially if I don't have the right color. Um, that's <laughs> oh yeah, if you don't have the right color, just don't tell anybody and use the 50 weight. Yeah, I mean, you're but not we have a thread really kit for you. Able to tell, but it's just a it's a smoother look. It doesn't look as dimensional, dimensional and appliqued. I, I don't know how to explain it. We just like 30 weight better. Yeah. And, yeah, it's the 30 weight. So in your thread kit, what I have out are the um, king spools or the bigger spools, whatever they're called. What we have in your thread kits, I love the petite because, one, it's very cost-effective and you can buy, like, every color. Well, I don't think you should call them petites because they call the 12 weights or petites. Oh, I thought all the petite spools were petites. Are they called are they calling them petites? Yeah. Oh. But the, the 30 weight spools that we have in your thread kit, that we've now had that size from Sulky for probably about three years, four years. But they made that size just for mom initially. So she wanted to be able to say, I want a thread kit with like every color in it, but you don't need this much necessarily. So that petite spool is just absolutely fantastic. I love it. And it looks so cute. And go back. kudos to Sulky. I mean, we love them. I can't tell you how great Sulky is. I love Sulky. We should have taken pictures yesterday in the office. Everybody was working on hundreds and hundreds of thread kits, and they're gorgeous when they're all laid out. Mm -hmm. I should have taken some pictures, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So pretty. It was all kinds of um, St. Patty's Day colors coming up. I even March. helped make some thread kits yesterday. You did. You made probably like a thread kit. 120. Mom was like, I'm really tired of doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Can I come make a thread kit? It was very therapeutic to just... It is. You know. It's what we say, like, all the boxes are packed with love. They really are. Like, it's very fun to put all the kids together. Everybody enjoys it, I think. It's, like, calming. At least I hope our staff has fun doing it. I think everyone do. likes it. Well, especially when everybody's, like, downstairs and they're all in their crew of what they're kidding. They have, like, Kindle or whatever in their ear. You know, they're listening to music or pod. Like me, I'm obsessed with podcasts. So, yeah. Well, yay. I hope that we covered a whole bunch of tips for you. I thank you so much for being a member of the Christmas Lane. If you're not, what are you waiting for? Stitchesofloveclothing.com. Click on Christmas Lane. We offer it two ways. Yeah, that's right. So this was all about the sewing machine version for block one. The next video that we will film for you all is all about the embroidery machine version. And so we'll have a video both ways, both ways. Both ways, every Did month. Did my puppy show it on the floor? I don't think so. Do you want to bring her up real fast? Well, she's Let's fine. see. Ellie Bear, come here. Oh, she's so comfortable laying down. Let's not get her up. But we'll I'm make her make a debut again. I have a little puppy. She's a golden, a mini golden doodle. Mini golden doodle. And she is five months old now. I She is melting our hearts more and more every day. And Buttons' is little heart. Buttons wasn't the biggest fan at first. Upset her apple cart. Yep. But now, yesterday, I don't know if you noticed this, you were coming up on the elevator. Buttons knew that y'all were on the elevator. And I thought this dog was going to put her nose through the door to try and get to <laughs> Ellie Bear. She was so excited. I was like, be careful. But she was she's right also, there waiting. She's also not mad at me anymore. Um, just yes, she was week, mad at you for getting a just dog. Just this week, she got not mad at me. Yeah. Since Christmas, she's been mad. 
I would say since Thanksgiving. Was it Thanksgiving? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Thanksgiving. And she's been a little mad at me for, like, you know, liking your dog so much. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Ellie, she just likes everybody. She does. She did. She does good at her play care. Yeah, super fun. Okay, well, we're just rambling now. But if you have puppies, you totally understand why we're mm-hmm. talking about the puppy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for being a member, and we hope that you do have fun with yeah. Christmas Lane and check us out for um, other block of the months if you're not interested. Oh my in gosh! Christmas yes. Lane. How can you not be interested in Christmas Lane? Come on. No, well, you can. Okay. You can join the boot crew. <laughs> Or the gnomes. I love the gnomes. Or the sheep. Or the hedgies. Or girls' life. No, hedgies is closed for registration at the moment. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Hedgies are sold out. Can't get hedgies. <laughs> they quit making some of the fabric, so. Oh, don't worry. I'll pick new. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Happy stitching. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to help. Bye. Bye.